Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew and welcome to my Sewing for Beginners series. In this video we're going to be discussing the terms basting and tacking and they mean the same thing and then I'm going to be showing you how I personally baste or tack my seams on the sewing machine and also by hand. So what is the term basting or tacking? Basting or tacking is a temporary stitch. It's a temporary way of holding your layers of fabric together. Usually it's a large stitch because it's temporary, it makes it quick to do and it makes it easy to remove. Now you can either do this on the sewing machine or by hand and I'll explain the reasons why I would use either technique. Personally, I tend to use the sewing machine and when you're doing this on the sewing machine you're going to want to use a large stitch length, so a stitch length of four millimeters or greater. It is up to you whether you backstitch at the start and at the end and that depends on what I'm doing. I generally use a basting or tacking stitch on the sewing machine when I'm creating sample garments. It might be that I'm making a calico or muslin a toile garment then I will generally do this on the sewing machine and I will backstitch at the start and at the end, otherwise the seams will start to come undone. I might also do it if I perhaps know the garment's going to fit but I just want to sort of try it on and check, maybe my customer's lost a bit of weight or something, then again I might baste the seams together and again I would use it on the sewing machine with a backstitch. Now a sewing pattern might also use the term for basting or tacking. They might ask you in the instructions to baste or tack an area and that's generally because you either might have maybe a few layers that you're having to put together or perhaps it's a particularly tricky area. If you're making a shirt they might ask you to baste the collar on before putting the collar stand on and what they're doing there is to try and get you to put one layer on get everything in position so that when you then position the top layer on and it's perhaps hidden, that layer that you've basted or tacked on, it means that everything is held in place and you're not going to make any mistakes. Again I would do that on the sewing machine but you might not want to do that on the actual stitching line then. I'll normally do it just shy of the stitching line, perhaps at 4 eighths, so half an inch if my seam allowance is 5 eighths. 1.2 centimeters if my seam allowance is 1.5 centimeters. It just makes it easier to unpick because you are going to want to remove the basting or tacking in a real garment. Now I also baste or tack things by hand and actually I probably do more of that. When I'm basting or tacking something by hand it's because I want to have some control and perhaps I'm working with a difficult fabric, it could be something that's really slippy or I'm pattern matching. Then I'll do it by hand because it allows me to have the control to work with the difficult fabric or to match the pattern on the garment that I'm making. And then when I take it to the sew machine, everything will sit together properly. Whether I baste or tack on my stitching line, I will always do that when I'm matching patterns. Or whether I do it in the seam allowance, so very close to the stitching line, will depend on what I'm doing. So it's just something to bear in mind. Generally when I'm basting or tacking I will use basting thread and I'll show you this in closer up in a minute. This is a cotton basting thread and it's great because it's quite um, a textured thread so therefore it's easy to remove and you can break it really really easily which again makes it easy to remove and easy to sort of break off and quickly baste or tack an area together. The other thread that I like to use is this silk basting or tacking thread. It's very very smooth and I'll use this on garments and fabric where the cotton might be a little bit rough and it might catch it, so silks, lightweight fabrics, things like that. I prefer to use my silk basting thread. I'll pop links to where you can get these in the description box below. So let me show you how to use basting or tacking thread on the sewing machine and then I'll show you how I do it by hand. Now I've started by setting my sewing machine to a large stitch length of four millimeters or greater. Now it's up to you whether you want to backstitch at the start of your basting or tacking. Depends what you're using the basting or tacking for. If you're worried that perhaps you're going to try a sample garment on and you don't want the stitching to come undone, then I would recommend doing one or two stitches forwards and then backwards just to secure the large basting stitch. However, you do not need to do a backstitch and it will be easier to remove if you don't have to backstitch. 
You're simply then going to sew along as you normally would. Now it's up to you whether you want to stitch on the sewing line or whether you want to stitch inside the seam allowance. Again, this depends on the reason that you're doing the basting or tacking. If I'm basting or tacking to try on a garment to check the fit, then I will need to do it on my stitching line. So that's going to be depending on the seam allowance that my pattern is using. Mine could be 5 eighths, and I'm either going to use the guide on the side here, or perhaps I could draw a line that I need to follow. Now, if you're basting something, perhaps you're, as an example, making a shirt, and your pattern has asked you to baste the yoke on, but then you're going to be sewing another yoke or a back or something on, onto that. In that case, the pattern's asking you to baste or tack an area. It simply wants you to get one layer onto your fabric before positioning the next layer on top. And it's sort of trying to help you make sure that you're going to be accurate with your sewing. In that case, I would personally baste or tack in my seam allowance because then my basting or tacking stitch isn't visible and it means that I'm not stitching on top of the basting or tacking, it means that I can easily remove it. In that case, I might, again, either draw a line or use the guide on here on my sewing machine plate to make sure that I was stitching just inside my stitching line. So if I was working with 5 eighths of an inch, 1.5 centimeters, I would perhaps baste or tack at the half an inch or 1.2 centimeter mark. Again, when you get to the end, depending on what you're doing, you can either do a small back stitch or you can leave it and have long tails instead. And that is what a basting or tacking stitch looks like on the sewing machine. It is a large stitch length, which makes it easy to remove. I personally use my sewing machine to baste or tack my sample garments together. But except for doing that, the majority of the basting or tacking I will do is by hand. Now I do this because I want the control that hand sewing provides me. Because when I'm basting or tacking something, I'm checking that the two layers of fabric are going to sew together. Perhaps I'm working with a difficult fabric and I need a little bit of extra help. Perhaps I'm trying to pattern match something and I really want to make sure that that pattern is going to match before I take it to the sewing machine. In that case, I would get my project and it probably would be pinned together. It doesn't have to be. Sometimes I will work to put the layers together as I'm actually basting or tacking by hand. Now, I generally use a basting or tacking thread. This thread here is a cotton basting or tacking thread. It is great because it breaks really easily. You can just pull it out really easily. You can break it off. You don't even need scissors to do your basting or tacking, and it's really quite textured, which means that it is easy to, to remove from your fabric. I also use a lot of silk basting thread as well, which is much smoother, so it's better with finer fabrics, where you don't want the cotton thread to sort of catch. Um, and yes, yeah, so both of these are my go-to sort of basting threads. Now, I generally use them on needles that are self-threading needles. And I do this again for speed. So the self-threading needles actually have a little eye in the top and all you need to do is to push the thread down either side of the little eye to get it into the eye of the needle. And it means that it's really quick when you need to change thread. Now, when it comes to basting or tacking, I will either tie a knot at the end of my thread or I will simply sew over myself. Majority of the time I will sew over myself. So I will leave a little bit of a long tail and I just put one stitch on top of that. I don't need any more than one stitch because this isn't designed to be secure. I just don't want it to come undone. I will then do a running stitch and my running stitch is going to be about a quarter of an inch in length, which is about five millimeters. Now, depending on what I'm doing and the reason why I'm basting or tacking this, I may actually be stitching on my stitching line. That will be the case if I am pattern matching. If I'm pattern matching, then I must do my basting or tacking on my stitching line. Otherwise, I do not know if my basting or tacking is going to hold the pattern correctly in place. And you really want to make sure that you are holding that stitching line in place because that's the most important bit. If perhaps I'm basting or tacking because I've got a tricky fabric, then I might do it just off the stitching line, a sixteenth to an eighth, so two to three millimeters 
inside, so closer to the edge of the fabric, so in the seam allowance. And that just makes it easier for me to remove this. And when it comes to changing threads, I will, would simply sew over myself, just like I did at the start, cut this thread off with a, bit, with a bit of a tail, and then begin again. If you want to draw a line with perhaps some chalk to help you, and obviously you could stitch on the line or just inside of the line, then you're welcome to do that. I would recommend using chalk or a removable pen. Otherwise, you can by all means hold your ruler close and make sure that you are accurately stitching this or perhaps position some pins onto your stitching line. That also might help you. And just remember that this doesn't have to be neat. Nobody is going to see this because you will be removing it. It's simply there to help you create the project that you're making. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you now feel confident about basting or tacking in the future.